The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today's story, Sabotage. Today's exciting adventure with The Shadow starts in just a moment. But first, I'd like to say a few words about health. Over 50% of all family colds can be traced to uneven heat or overheating in the home. So protect your family's health by burning blue coal, America's finest anthracite. Then you'll be sure of steady, lasting, healthful heat at less cost. The next time you order fuel, ask for Blue Coal by name. You don't have to get a full supply. Your nearest Blue Coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. For test number 11. Engine room standing by, Commander. Ship, full speed ahead! What the... Engine room! Hello! Hello, engine room! Chief Engineer Swain reporting. Boiler explosion, sir. Three casualties, sir. Good Lord, what happened, Commander? Boiler explosion, Lieutenant. Hard luck, sir. Luck nothing. You mean another case of sabotage? Yes, sabotage. Submarine L-21 calling submarine base. Submarine L-21 calling submarine base. Submarine base answering L-21. Go ahead, L-21. Submarine L-21 in distress. Submarine L-21 calling submarine base. Submarine L-21 calling submarine base. Submarine L-21 calling submarine Returning to base. Cruiser returning to base. Explosion. Explosion in after gun turret. Three dead. Six wounded. Suspect sabotage. Suspect sabotage. Good Lord. Hello. 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 Sentry post number four reporting. Explosion and fire. Explosion and fire and destroyer dry dock. Stag Island Shipyard! Stag Island Shipyard! Here's Admiral Keeley now. Yeah, well, what are the findings of the board, Admiral? Yeah, Admiral, what's the dope on this sabotage ring? Gentlemen, the board has authorized me to make this statement to the press. Let's have it, Admiral. Yeah, let's have the lowdown, Admiral. Our inquiry indicates that all ships affected by recent acts of sabotage have all been built, reconditioned, or repaired in the Sag Island yard. Sag Island, eh? Yes. And every resource at the command of the government is being directed toward the apprehension of those responsible for the systematic blows at the naval defense strength of the United States. <laughs> Preston, would you mind telling me where you've been for the past five days? I was nearly frantic until I got your call asking me to meet you. And why those old clothes, and why haven't you shared? Oh, I'm sorry, Margot. I've been at Sag Island. Sag Island? You mean where they're having all the trouble in the shipyard? Yes, it seemed to be a case where the shadow might be of some use to his country. You've uncovered something. Is that why you sent for me, Lamont? I'm not sure, but I stumbled on something last night. It's been a process of elimination. Where are we going? Back to Sag Island? Yes, we're almost there now. Lamont, have you anything definite to work on? It seems so hopeless. You forget, Margot, that I, as the shadow, have a certain gift. You mean what the underworld call the power of invisibility? Yes. 
Yes, and the ability to read other men's minds, particularly the mind of a man who has something to hide. But you've got to find that man first, Lamar. I know. Do you mean that out of the 3,000 men in the Sag Island shipyard, you found the one man who has eluded the Secret Service, the police, and everyone for weeks? I think I have, Margot. I'll know for sure tonight. What do you want me to do, Lamont? We're coming into Sag Island now. I want you to go to the Sag Island Hotel, take a room, and set up the shortwave radio outfit. You brought it, didn't you? Yes, it's in the baggage compartment. Good. Now listen, Margot. Tune in the wave I use as the shadow and wait. Wait all night if necessary. Stop the car here, Margot. Yes. Lamont, I know you don't believe in women's intuition. At least you pretend not to. On the to. contrary, I have a healthy respect for intuition. I'll be careful. I have a premonition myself. Lamont, can't you tell me anything more? I can only tell you I'm going into that bar down the street. If this man is the one I think he is, we will have a very interesting visit in that bar. <laughs> Bartender, set him up again. Yeah, one more round. Come doing, boys. Closing time. All right. Come on, Jake. Okay. Good night. Come on, Bill. Let's go. Good night, boys. Good night. Holy mackerel. Two o'clock already. An hour passes quickly when a man is talking about himself, Mr. Buckler. What? What have I been talking about? What have I... Say, who the devil are you, anyway? If you're one of them Secret Service guys trying to pump me, you're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, I'm not a Secret Service man. I... Well, then what's your game? What's yours? You're not looking for a job. You're a phony. I have a good notion to turn you over to the cops. They're rounding up guys like you. Sit down, Buckler. Listen to me or you'll get us both in trouble. Huh? Who sent you here? Who told you to look me up? Would it help if I told you what you're thinking, Buckler? Quit stalling. Who sent it's you? It's running through your mind over and over again. I see it like a picture on a slate. You're thinking, did Arnheim send him? Did Arnheim send him? You're a liar. I never mentioned Arnheim's name. Never heard of him. Then why are you thinking of a name you never heard? Don't be a fool, Buckler. I know. What do you know? What did he send you for? What's wrong? Why didn't he... Yes. Leave? Nothing. Quit staring at me like that or I... You were going to say, why didn't Arnheim tell me himself? Suppose we go ask him. No, no. He don't want anybody to know. If you're in on this, you ought to know that. Listen, you. I don't know how much you know or how much... Hey, you two, it's past closing time. Come on, I'll clear out. Tomorrow's another day. My friend and I were just leaving. Yeah? Well, you have to go out to the alley. I locked up the front door, and I ain't unlocking it again. Come along, Buckler. We can finish our talk on the way. On the way to where? Come along, I'll show you. All right. We can cut through the alley. We can talk on the way. Yes, we can talk. After you, Buckler. Okay, come on. Hey, come on, what's the idea? We're going down the dark alley, ain't we? <laughs> hey, you, cut the comedy and come on. Your companion has left you, Mr. Buckler. He saw your hand slip into that pocket where you carry a blackjack. He saw the picture in your mind. And knowing you meant to crush his skull, he asked me to take his place. What is this, a frame-up? Who was that guy? Who are you? Steve Buckler, you're a traitor. You're selling your birthright, your honor, your country's safety for money you'll never live to collect. How do you know all that? Who are you, anyway? This is your first excursion in crime, isn't it, Buckler? What difference does that make? Who are you? What do you want? If you had any contact with the underworld, you wouldn't have to ask who I am. Have you ever heard of the shadow, Steve Buckler? The, the shadow? So that's it. That's who you are. The man who can hide anywhere that no one has ever seen. Yes, Buckler. The man no one has ever seen. Don't move. Shall I tell you what you're thinking? I see the picture inside your head. You're thinking you'd kill me if you could only see me. You. You're like that other guy. You can't tell what I'm thinking. All right, you got me dead to rights. What do you want me to do? Stop taking orders from Arnheim. Is, is that all? You mean you're not going to turn me over to the Secret Service? No. Now, I'm going to give you one more chance, Steve Buckler. One last chance. <laughs> the Shadow's Adventure will continue in just a moment. Meanwhile, thousands of homeowners are engaged in another kind of adventure. An adventure in home heating involving the health of your family. I am referring to the purchase of fuel. 
You know, if you order just any kind of coal, it's a gamble. But it's a gamble you don't have to take. Baltimore families, for example, have found out how to eliminate the risk in fuel buying. They order blue coal by name. That's why the sale of blue coal in Baltimore so far this winter is 40% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. And this is happening in many other cities. Here is real proof that blue coal, the cream of Pennsylvania anthracite, is by actual test the best of all fuels. It is the only solid fuel actually trademarked with a harmless blue color so that you can tell at a glance that it is the fuel that gives low-cost heating. It is the fuel to buy for cleanliness. Baltimore homeowners like the steady, long-burning qualities of blue coal. This is a decided advantage compared to other fuels requiring so much attention. The Glen Alden Coal Company prepared blue coal especially for home use in four home sizes, egg, stove, chestnut, or pea. So I urge all homeowners throughout this area to find out what thousands of Baltimore families have already learned about the greater comfort, convenience, and economy of blue coal. Order your trial ton of blue coal tomorrow. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name of Blue Coal. Margot Lane. Margot Lane. Stand by. Stand by. I have found our man. He is meeting someone. The shadow will be with them. Stand by. Who's there? Who's there? It's Regal. Let me in, Butler. Oh, okay. Where? Where's Arnhem? Why didn't he come? What makes you think he'd be fool enough to come here just because you sent word you're in trouble? <sighs> I've got to see him. I've got to talk to him, Regal. What's the matter with you? The Secret Service men been asking you questions again? No, they don't suspect anything. But somebody else is after us. Somebody knows Arnhem is back of all this sabotage. Well, who is it? <laughs> come on, Butler, out with it. Let <laughs> Quit go me, I'll tell you. It's the shadow. The shadow. Don't give me that. It's the truth. That's why I phoned on him. I got to have the money you promised me. I got to get away from here. Listen, you fool. How did the shadow get wise to you? How much does he know? I'm not sure. I... How did he find out unless you told him? I didn't tell him. But he can read your mind. Listen, you got to take me to Arnheim. I got to get away. How did you get away from the shadow? He, he let me go. Said he was giving me one last chance. You're lying, Buckler. People don't get away from the shadow. He doesn't let them go unless they're working for him. Listen, if you're trying to pull a double cross on Arnheim, you'll never live to tell it. I'm telling you the truth, Rigo. You've got to believe me. All right. Maybe you are. If it just happens, we've got another job for you that will prove whether you're on the level with Arnheim or not. I, I can't do anything more. The Shadow knows I'm responsible for all those accidents. He'll find me. You can't hide from anybody like that. He'll find you dead if you don't do as you're told. Besides, Butler, you'd like to get that $50,000 Arnheim promised you, wouldn't you? I've done more than he asked already. I've earned that $50,000 a dozen times over. Well, maybe you have. But you don't get it unless you carry out Arnheim's orders. Well, this is the last. It'll be easy for you. And it won't take you long. I'll wait for you. Take you to Arnheim's place. He'll pay you off and you can be on your way. Well, what about it, Buckler? What does he want this time? It's that battle cruiser that's going out on a trial run in the morning. <laughs> it's too late to tamper with anything now, Regal. So what? Your turbine inspector... You're scheduled to go along, we know that. But, but how? What can I do? It's too late, I tell you. I'll show you what you're going to do. You see this metal tube? Yeah. What do you want me to do with it? You're going aboard the cruiser and plant that inside some piece of machinery. Some place where it'll get smashed when the engine starts. What's in that tube? Oh, nothing much. Just enough nitroglycerin to tear the turbines out of that cruiser. No, I won't do it. It'll kill every man in the engine room. It won't be the first time, Buckler. I couldn't carry that thing into the yard. They're searching everybody, Rigo. Quit stalling, will you? We know they don't search inspectors. That's why you've been so useful. All right. Suppose I can get it in the machinery. Get off the ship before she sails. How do I know Arnheim will keep his word? Pay me off and let me get away. I didn't come here to bargain with you, Buckler. All I know is Arnheim told me to bring you back after you'd carried out his orders. All right. I'll do it. But this is the last time. Give me that tube. Now you're talking. But look out for that stuff. It's touchy. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? You better go first. Nothing doing. I'm making sure you get to the yard. That cruiser sails with the flood tide. 
And don't try anything because I'll be waiting for you in my car when you come out. Well, come on. Margot Lane. Margot Lane. Drive to shipyard. Watch for black sedan parked in front of Red Brick Building. Our man is Steve Buckler, ship inspector. I am following him into shipyard to prevent another accident. Margot. Don't lose sight of that black sedan. It will lead us to the real head of the sabotage ring. Morning, Mr. Buckler. Oh, morning, Lieutenant. Giving the turbines a bit of final inspection before we start on the trial run? Yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd have a look around. Go right ahead. I have to check the gauges. Let me know if you find anything that needs adjustment. I'll let you know, Lieutenant. I'll show on. I'll, I'll show I'm not afraid to go through with this. There, now. Just wait till those turbines start spinning. Till they smash that metal tube of nitroglycerin. Just wait. Everything went all right, Mr. Butler? Yeah. Yeah, everything's fine. Just fine, Lieutenant. Just fine. Yes. Everything will be just fine in just a moment. As soon as I've removed this tube of nitroglycerin that Buckler put in the turbine. <laughs> Margo, Margo, wait a minute. Oh, Lamar, thank heavens you're here. There goes that last sedan. Buckler and a man named Rigo. Follow them and don't get too close. What happened in the shipyard? Well, Buckler tried to carry out another sabotage job for a man named Arnheim. He's the man we want. Did you stop Buckler? Yes, but he doesn't know it. Don't have an accident, Margot. We'll be scattered all over the landscape. Oh. Careful, Margot. What do you mean? Just as this metal tube I'm carrying contains enough nitroglycerin to blow it to Kingdom Come if it's jolted hard enough. Where'd you get it, Lamont? From Buckler? Yes, he left it in a gearbox at the battle cruiser. Oh, so that's why you followed him into the shipyard. Slow down, Margot. You're getting too close to that car. Yes, yes. I, I had to stop that murderous scheme, even if it meant losing track of Buckler and Rigo. But do you think they'll lead us to this man who seems to be behind all this? On high? I'm sure of it. Look, Lamont. They're turning in that big estate. Quick, Margot. Call up the road and stop. Yes. Lamont, look at the sign. Hmm. Redland Sanitarium. This doesn't look like a place where Arnheim would have his headquarters. That's probably why he selected it. Well, Margot, this is it. Lamont, you're not going in there alone. Yes, the shadow is going to return this little metal instrument of death to Dr. Arnheim in person. Doctor? Yes, just look at that sign, Margot. Redland Sanitarium, Dr. Felix Arnheim, resident physician. Oh, please don't go in there alone, Lamont. Let's notify the state police. We can. I have the radio transmitter in the car. Good, and I, I want you to call the state police on the regular wavelength five minutes after I've gone in the house. Well, why not call them now? Margo, we're not dealing with amateurs. They're undoubtedly prepared against police raids. If the police blunder in there, they'll only find an empty house. I've got to go in there alone. Don't take that night for glitter in Richard Lamont. Well, Margo, I must. This tube of... Concentrated death is an important part of my plan to hold those men in that house until the police break in. Oh, don't, Lamont. You said you had a premonition, remember? Don't, Margot, worry. Call the police, and in five minutes, five minutes, which is in the lap of the gods. And in the hands of the shadows. <laughs> Dr. Arnheim. Uh, so you have to come to tell me you're afraid, Mr. Butler. You wish to go away. Far away. Yes. Yes, I know when I've had enough. And I want that $50,000 and I want it quick. So. Have you carried out my last instructions? Yes, I have. And that's the finish. Pay me off and let me get away from here. Well, I'm afraid we must wait until we are sure of the success of your latest venture in sabotage, Mr. Butler. Mr. Arnheim. I think that night for glycerin on the cruiser will be traced to me an hour after the explosion. Every secret service agent in this country will be after me. We will see that they do not find you. I'll see to that myself. Listen, you'll give me that $50,000 and let me get out of here now or I'll... Oh, what? Keep him covered, Mr. Regal. Don't make a move, Butler. I hate to shoot men in the bank. <laughs> what are you going to do if we 
Don't pay you, Mr. Butler. And I'm, I'm warning you. Tell Rigo not to shoot. Do you think I didn't know you'd try something like this? Do you think I'd come here without an ace up my sleeve? Go on, Mr. Butler. Just this. This little bottle filled with some of the nitroglycerin you sent me to plant on the cruiser. You know what'll happen if I throw it. And I'll throw it if Rigo shoots. Mr. Butler, you're bluffing. That metal tube was sealed and could not be opened. You're crazy. I opened it. Pulled a little out of it. I... Rigo. I think Mr. Butler has served us long enough. He wants to go far away. I think we should help him. No. Don't. I've done everything you want. You can't kill me. You'll be caught. Mr. You... Butler, this is a sanitarium. Many persons have died here. It is quite useful. The police think nothing of one death, more or less. Are you sure there's no nitro in that bottle, Doctor? <laughs> quite sure. I think. Now, Mr. Rigo. No. No, don't! Shadow. Oh. The shadow warned me. I should have listened. Listen to the shadow. Mm, very good, Mr. Rigo. Uh, this, uh, this American man of mystery, the shadow, he interests me. You told me something about the telephone. Yes, he got to Butler last night. Makes himself invisible. As I told you over the phone, I think we'd better get out of the country for a while. Because of this uh, shadow? He's just a man using hypnotic forces that affect men's minds. Well, maybe, but once he gets on your trail, there's no shaking him off. But I know something about such forces. <laughs> he can appear in a room without being seen. Some How do they do it? Some call it the powers of angels or devils. But it's the art of mesmerism. Hypnotic suggestion is very old. And certain men of modern science have developed it amazingly. Well, no matter how he does it, I don't want to meet this shadow. In that case, Mr. Rigo, uh, will you be so kind as to remove that body? I I dislike the presence of the dead. All right, I'll take care of it. I'll be in the cellar if you need me. I shall not need you. Say, what's funny, Doc? What are you grinning about? I am looking forward to a conversation I'm going to have. Somebody coming here? Uh, not exactly. Don't concern yourself, Mr. Rigo. This is something beyond your comprehension. Okay. I'll be on tap if you need me. What are you waiting for, Shadow? Why don't you speak? How long have you known I was in this room, Doctor? For quite some minutes, Shadow. While I'm not a master of your art of invisibility, my mind is sensitive to such a forceful concentration as you exert to cloak your presence. I see. Since you sent Rigo away, it is evident you are not afraid of me. Mm, fear is a luxury I do not allow myself, Shadow. Your career of sabotage is over, Dr. Arnheim. I think not. I have never met a man who did not have a prize, Shadow. I have only one price for your kind, Doctor. Prison. You could be very valuable to me, Shadow. Don't reach into that drawer, Doctor. A gun is of no use. A gun? <laughs> that is a crude way of setting a difference of opinion. But uh, money, I can pay well. Money won't help you. Then you need me no alternative. You see that little wheel set into this wall? Yes. I turn it... And gas. Yes, Shadow, gas. The room is airtight. It served me well on other occasions, Shadow. You can't get out. The door is locked on the outside. What good will it do you to kill me if you also die? I'm not going to kill you or myself with this gas. What then? Just enough gas will be liber liberated to numb your powers of concentration. Enough to destroy your ability to remain invisible. You can't resist it, Shadow. And just the moment you will weaken, become visible, and the moment I see you, the moment I catch the faintest glimpse of a shadowy form, I shoot. The air is becoming quite heavy, Shadow. Yes, but... <laughs> Listen, Dr. Arnheim. The police are closing in, Doctor. So, you don't trust your own powers. You had to have the police to help you. In a few minutes, the place will be surrounded. That is all the time I need. You will become visible. I shall 
kill you. And then... And then... I take the police a little while to break into this room. When they do, they will find a dead shadow. But I shall not be here. This door behind me leads to a passageway which leads to a bay. A speedboat awaits me there. I know about the speedboat, Dr. Arnheim. <laughs> you see? The gas is doing its work. You're weakening. Your power of invisibility is losing its... What is it, Rigo? Uh, Doctor, quick, the police. The passageway. The speedboat is ready. We can make it. Hey, what are you doing with that gas? What's the idea? Wait, Rigo. The shadow. He's here in this room. In just a moment, he will become visible. But you haven't time to wait. The police are already in the house. Don't try to escape in that speedboat. I have turned it into a death trap, Dr. Arnheim. Oh, come, come, quicker. It'll be too late. Wait, Dr. Arnheim. Death is waiting for you in that speedboat. A violent death of your own making. No, you can't love me. Don't listen to him, Doctor. Hurry. All right. But remember, Shadow. We shall meet again. I'm afraid not, my friend. But first, let me turn off this gas. Take the way. Run everybody apart. Wilson, Harvey, Davidson, you men take me upstairs. Let's follow me. Try that room, Sergeant. Okay. <coughs> Captain, <coughs> this room's full of gas. Sergeant, and I go there. Try it. Looks like they skipped. What's that? Sounded like an explosion down near the water. <laughs> yes, it was an explosion, gentlemen. And there will be no more wrecking of warships. It was the tube of nitroglycerin. Intended for the new battle cruiser by Dr. Arnheim. And placed in the gears of the good doctor's own steel. With the compliment of the shadow. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of The Shadow. Be sure to listen. <laughs>